Hello all. So in the last video we have seen the design of a random access memory. So in this video we are going to see the design of a read-only memory or ROM. So the steps are more or less exactly the same. Only difference is in RAM uh, we'll be storing some data, later we'll be reading it. But in case of ROM, uh, we don't want to store any data at runtime. ROM might already contain some data at runtime. Uh, we just want to read that data and use it. Okay. So we don't have these signals for ROM. We don't have write enable write data or write address. We only have clock read address and read data. So from abstract view, you will have only clock here and we only have read address and read data. Other concepts, they remain exactly same. So this also has this internal array and uh, we will have an output multiplexer who will be reading data from here. Again, whether you need one clock latency or no latency, uh, you can design accordingly. Okay. So let's quickly go ahead and do the design. I'll start again a new file. And I'm copy pasting exactly the same code of RAM here. And I will just remove write enable write address and write data from here. Okay. And I don't have this logic for writing to the memory. Fine. Now, if you just use this module, it is more or less useless because the internal memory remains uninitialized forever. Uh, practically, when you run it, the memory can have some random data, okay, which you can never change. So in case of ROM, we want to store some read-only data there at the beginning. So how can we do it? Again, if you are going for FPGA-based design, this is very straightforward. In case of ASIC, uh, this will be done differently. So you can use the initial block that we have seen before to initialize this memory array. Okay. For example, uh, I have a depth of 1024 here and I can store data in the memory using the initial block. Again, uh, it has nothing to do like at runtime, this data will get stored in the memory. No, instead of that, the simulator, at the beginning of the simulation, he will store this data in the array. If we are going for FPGA-based implementation, the implementation tool will configure the internal flip-flops in such a way that as soon as you power on the FPGA, uh, these values are stored in the memory. Okay, so that's how it happens. So I can store like uh, memory zero, okay, tick D2, and uh, mem1 is uh, tick D5, so and then so forth. So this way, you can initialize the memory. Okay, I just want to initialize only three locations. Depending upon your application, you may want to initialize all the 1024. Or if you have a small memory, you can just initialize uh, those many memories. So let me call it rom.v and you can quickly simulate it and see. Yeah, the mistake I did is when I copy pasted, I didn't change the module name. Okay, so okay, so here also you can see that memory list uh, that we discussed before. If you want to see the content, you can see it here. So the first location uh, will be here. We haven't started the simulation, but once we start the simulation, you will see those initialization values will come here. We can add to a window and we can give some clock turn on a second okay turn on a second let's keep the address as zero you can see like as soon as the simulation starts the rom gets filled with those uh, initial data So if I change the address to say address one, uh, we'll be seeing the data stored in address one in the next clock edge. This is, yeah, you can see radix unsigned, it is two, it is five. That's what we stored here, okay? This is one way of doing it. 
another way which we usually do is store this initialization data in a separate text file and load that initialization data to this memory array again uh, the simulator he will be loading it as soon as the simulation starts the implementation tool he'll be reading that text file and he will use it to initialize the memory okay so to do that we have uh, some system task in Wittler. So one of them is dollar read memb. Uh, you can see the color is changing because it's a predefined so-called system task. So if you are using this system task, the data that is stored in that initialization file is expected to be in binary format. Okay, so the syntax is uh, you need to pass two elements here, the memory array where you want to store and the file where you have stored this initialization data so first we need to pass that file name let's call it like init data dot mif so the file name should be given in double quotes we usually give the extension dot mif to that file it stands for memory initialization file you can give any extension he actually doesn't care it should be in text format that's the only requirement and it should be in the same folder where your source code is otherwise you will have to give the entire path to that file here you can have it anywhere in your system but you will have to give the full path if you are just giving the file name it should be in the current folder okay so now if you compile there is no compilation error okay you can recompile but when you try to restart simulation he will warn you like he cannot find this file one second okay we start uh, you can see like we failed to open readmap file in it data in read mode okay so we need that file so it can be a text file you can uh, create it from here itself so as i mentioned uh, this is supposed to be a binary file readmap b b stands for binary so we can store it one by one in different lines okay so if i want first data to be one so i can just do 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 and second one 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 another one 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 another one 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 like that uh, each value you will store in a different line and save it as the as the file name that we use here so init data dot mif okay okay so we don't have to recompile now because there is no change in source code i'll just restart it and when i run it now uh, i won't i won't get that warning anymore because he found that file okay so now let's give that clock so let's give 10 nanosecond again and read address let's keep it okay zero let's see what happens you'll see like it is one here on this clock edge from the first address and we can give address one and you'll see 85 here which is the decimal equivalent of this one, okay, whichever we stored in address one. Like that, it just works. Now, suppose if you store something which is not binary in nature, okay, so suppose you store five here, and let me restart the simulator. And if you try to run it, it will give an error saying like illegal binary digit five, because he is expecting only binary numbers here. Okay. Now, similarly, uh, read mem b, we also have read mem h also. So, here you can give hexadecimal number. So, if your memory width is very wide, we don't want to write like 32 bits of uh, binary data. We just want to write some hexadecimal, like okay, 1 a or something like that. Let me recompile and restart. Now he's expecting the data to be in hexadecimal. Okay, so he's actually happy with this one A. Here you will get a warning saying like too many digits at eight in line two. Okay, so he is treating this as a hexadecimal number now, not a binary number. So we have eight digit here 
in hexadecimal that basically means 8 times 4 32 bits this is actually representing 32 bits now so he is warning you too many bits so he is expecting maximum 4 because 4 times 4 is 16 our uh, width is only uh, 16 so in hex maximum there should be only 4 digits now he is saying like you have 8 digits okay so this also we need to convert it into hexadecimal number and write it so this is how we can initialize the memory now unfortunately there is no read mem d where you can write it in decimal uh, this doesn't exist so you have to always go with binary or hexadecimal we usually prefer hexadecimal for concise representation okay thank you